So uh, tell us how this journey began when you met Mark, Marky and when you decided you needed to document this. So yeah, almost immediately. I was uh, visiting my parents in Wisconsin. I grew up in Milwaukee and uh, was home for the holidays. And I saw Marky working in the airport. And I immediately knew we had to uh, start recording together. And uh, the form it took has changed considerably. Over the years, originally we were making webisodes, we were making fun little bits of encouragement for the internet, and then uh, as we progressed, Marky sort of welcomed me into her life, started sharing her story with me, and that's uh, from that point on we knew this, it was more than webisodes, and it had to really be, uh, the only way this could be told is in a feature film. Yeah. Uh, with, with such a compelling figure in a subject, what were you careful of when... Uh, you were, or what were you sure you didn't want this story or documentary to become? It's, when you're filming, it's kind of hard to know what it is or isn't or what it's going to be, and you kind of just film it as it happens, and then what it is kind of uh, evolves in the edit. But, you know, there, there was uh, sensitivity around a lot of parts of Marky's life, and I didn't want to uh, cause additional trouble. Marky at work. I didn't want to get her in trouble at work. Uh, she's a TSA agent, and this was um, an earlier version of the TSA, and I, they were a little skittish about people filming, people using their images, and uh, Marky transitioned on the job, and while they were uh, accepting, I think there was some sensitivity, so I didn't want to um, kind of kick the door down and invade her work environment. So I was very careful about that. And then also, um, a lot of the gender support meetings in those early days, I would have loved to come. And I asked Marky if I could come, but of course, there's a lot of sensitivity. Some people weren't, weren't uh, out to their friends, weren't out to their families, and there was a um, hesitation about appearing on film. And I especially didn't want um, to out anyone to talk to unintentionally caused trouble, um, so uh, th there was considerable sensitivity. Marky, when, what, what do you feel like you want people to take away from this, this documentary? Over the course of the years, we've been trying to educate and inform about trans people and trans lives. Most of the basic trans 101 things have caused stirred controversy, but nobody's seen what happens after transition and how how it affects the trans person's psyche and what have you. And what I want to do is let fundamentalists know, or anybody else know, and other people, so we have problems and there's various reasons for transition. And in the process, don't, don't throw the trans person away. Befriend them. Become their friend. You're a human being. I'm a human being. And, and uh, and to go ahead and say, hey, you know, I want to be your friend. You're going through stuff. I want to help you through just like Matt did for me. And even as you go forward. Did, did it, when Matt approached you, were you a little hesitant to, to do this at first? Or did you feel like this is a story you'd want it to be told? I was hesitant because I had no idea what he wanted me to do. What this was for or who he was. And all I said was, okay, we can do this, but I don't do porn. <laughs> so, did that change over time? Yes. Yeah. And so I ran, and I ran, and I ran to myself. I decided that gender transition is the ultimate thing to do, so I did. Except there was regret. And as we regretted, thought that at the end of it, I was about ready to die. We became more respectful of each other and each other's boundaries and territories. Still don't do porn, but you need to be more about the scene uh, that. That was not my intention. The mustache confuses people, but it's just <laughs> it's just facial hair, everybody. Sometimes it's just a mustache. But not the first person to make that joke. Not the first person to make that joke. Now this is this is this is this is sensitive material that we're talking about still. Even now, you know. Even though we're 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 we're, we're slowly transitioning as a society, but it's still very sensitive material. So, 
in a town like where you guys were in Wisconsin, what obstacles did you did you guys have to overcome? Were there certain things that you you had to change in the production and 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 going forward with you know filming that you didn't want to change but you had to just because of the obstacles? Not really. I mean, Milwaukee. There's Milwaukee's a fairly diverse uh, community. There's you know very liberal people. There's very conservative people. Um, and I don't think that really affected us too much. Of course, there's uh, sensitivity filming with Mark Church yeah. there, and you know, just uh, but it, it didn't really. I don't think it really changed too much. We try to be respectful of anyone we're around. You know, we filmed in the church, we filmed in the transgender support groups, sometimes even in the same day, and it was wild, but you know, it was. Uh, Marky set the tone, and I tried to be, uh, you know, this is a good Christian woman, I just tried to not swear too much. That's it, I didn't swear too much. Yeah, I, I, now, now we're swearing a lot, but in filming, I tried not to swear, and I tried to be. Uh, Courteous and you know, yeah, sure. kind person. Absolutely. What do you love about being an indie filmmaker? What do I love about? Uh, no one tells you what to do. <laughs> you can do whatever you freaking want. Uh, you get to do whatever you want, and as long as you're consistent, it, it feels true. And it's the consistency, and there's no. Uh, you're not making concessions for other, you know, for random commercial whims or. And I, you know, felt confident in the, uh, all the decisions we made benefited the film. And, uh, you know, we got feedback, we got opinions from others, but it was, you know, to, to make the film uh, as best as we could. As, as, fil as filmmakers, we often look at the screen and we go, we've seen this a thousand times, we look at our work a thousand times and we go, you know, I should have done this, I could have cut tighter, I could have got this better a shot. But I don't, I don't want to know from you those, those things. I want to know from you what do you think you nailed. Uh, there's a few moments, uh, there's a handful of moments throughout the film where it just feels very observational. I just stopped moving, I held the camera still, and I rolled. And um, it's an observational style I've been honing for a while, and it's just, it's, uh, it's directed by the use of time as opposed to telling people where to go, what to do, and sometimes it just works perfectly. So... As somebody from the outside, you know, who's going to see this film, who's going to absorb this experience, what do you think my next step will be in in absorbing this? Well, how would you how would you like me to kind of feel this and and kind of what would you like to see society do going forward for, for trans transitional people and and you know that world? What I'd like to see is for you to have a Sort of a comfort level and, a, and a, an appreciation for that world without having an argument against it, free going in, and having a sensitivity that somebody actually goes through that on a daily basis, and then to go ahead and have a compassion coming out and say, okay, I don't understand completely, but I want to reach out and I want to help even be a friend. And, uh, Realize you are who you are and what have you. I want to be your friend. Let's hang out and do things. Kind of meet me. So you, how about for you? What would you like to see people get out of this? Uh, just, you know, if we could be a hope and inspiration and people could take uh, take the difficult lessons Marky learned and use that to grow and use that to, uh, you know, move forward with their life and feel confident they can be who they are and there can be support and there can be for that. Hi, it's Mark Cog from Milwaukee. Just wanted to let you know my uh, saga is over. I'm an old fashioned, independent, fundamental, pre millennial, temperamental Baptist preacher. A real spiritual giant. I don't even know what this is going to sound like, to be honest with you. I'm a hard man to convince sometimes, even when it comes to doing wrong. Nothing makes us so lonely as our secrets. I was on the brink of disaster. And those of you that were here for that, I confess my sin to you and ask your forgiveness. It was wrong and it was wicked. Where in the world did this come from? Is this something the devil's throwing at me just to trip me up and destroy my ministry and, and, and destroy me? 
I did not choose this, and that's the very frustrating part. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Nice to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. They said you're deceived, and they want to put me through reparative therapy to beat it out of me. Somebody even taller than I am. Almost. I'll tell you this much, I'm here. That's why I chose life. My family member, they just want to say I miss you. It hurt when he wanted to go through that change, and I didn't want that to become what I remember of my dad. If, if Marky's not acceptable, how can I live my life in such a way to, to get rid of that? This is femininity. There she goes. Man can run and run for year after year. All he realizes is that he's running it from himself. By the grace of God, I am what I am.